Okay, now that our base are completely set, we're going to remove our casts from the impressions and see how our pour-up looks. It should come out relatively easily. You can see how the stone is completely covering all the anatomy, even beyond the anatomy of that we captured in our impression. That's kind of what we want to, to see. There's no major voids in our base. It's completely in contact with the first impression, first pour up. The same thing with the lower. And again, we'll evaluate the teeth, make sure we have no voids, evaluate the anatomy, make sure we've captured all the anatomy that we've captured in the impression. There are little tiny air bubbles on the occlusal surface of the teeth that we will remove. And then I'll show you the air bubbles in the vestibule. Here in the lingual area, I didn't fill the stone up all the way to the lingual of, of the where the impression was. Um, so I'm going to fill that in with a little bit of more stone and uh, in the second step. I'm not sure I videotaped that, but I'm going to fill that area in. So a little closer look at the teeth and the casts. There's, there'll be little, little uh, blebs or little nodules of stone. That I use a number seven wax spatula. You can use a variety of instruments to do this, but if you go right to the edge of where those little blobs of stone are, um, they should break off relatively easily. Um, the smaller the, air, the bubble, uh, the easier they break off. There's almost always bubbles on the occlusal surface, and you need to go and remove those. They'll interfere with how the casts um, come together when you place the maxillary cast on top of the mandibular. I go through and remove all the stones from the all the little nodules from the occlusal surface. Again, here in the lingual, it needs to fill up about eight or nine millimeters of stone there that I, I'm going to go and add in um, in, a, in another step. Because this impression was done on a typodont, um, there's some features that don't exist on real patients. For example, this already has a land area built in. This already has a flat lingual surface. A real patient won't have that, and you'll have to actually build that into your cast and form that in your cast. Um, so it's not entirely realistic, but it's pretty close. You see these air bubbles um, in my impression that we talked about previously. It's kind of large air bubbles in the vestibule. And on the cast, you can see how they show up. They're, they're large positive nodules. That, that is not what the patient looks like. That is not the anatomy of the patient. Um, and some of them are so large that I'm actually having to carve the cast to try to form what the, what the patient may more realistically look like. Um, the smaller ones break off relatively smoothly and, and you can't really tell they were there. But this large one, I'm having to to actually carve the stone, which I, I don't want to have to do. Um, so any any of those large air bubbles, sometimes it's better just to retake the impression and you'll know that you're getting a more accurate um, replication of the patient's mouth. Going around and breaking off any extra little air bubbles that are left. When you pour up your cast, if you have Positive nodules, meaning nodules that stick up off the cast, those are voids in your impression. If you have negative voids in the cast, those are air bubbles that were present when you poured up the cast. So you can kind of tell where the, where the bigger mistake was made. If you've got a lot of positive nodules, that's a problem with your impression. If you've got a lot of negative voids in your cast, that's a problem with pouring up the impression. And if you have both, then you may need to adjust, make some adjustments on both. And we're going to go ahead and trim our cast. But before you do that, you need to make sure you get your cast wet. Otherwise, the stone will stick everywhere and it will, it will distort the surface of your cast. So 
make sure you get it wet. When I start trimming the cast, I always trim the posterior first and make a nice flat area on the posterior that'll let me give me an area that I can set the cast to trim other areas. I'm not trimming it all the way to where it's going to be finished, but I'm trimming it so it's a flat zone that now I can trim the bottom of the cast. As I trim the bottom of the cast, what I'm trying to do is hold the occlusal surface um, completely perpendicular to the to the table of the trimmer, and I'm trying. I don't want it to be to be uh, slanted one side to the right or to the left. You can see in this case, I'm having to trim more in the anterior, and we'll kind of watch that that line move more to the posterior, and that that way I'm more confident I'm holding it at the same angle. But I'm looking down at the top of the cast to make sure the occlusal plane, I'm looking at the occlusal plane of the teeth to hold that perpendicular to the table. Before I finish the, the base, the bottom of the trim, I put it on the table to see how it's sitting. And I want the occlusal table to be relatively parallel, um, both right and left and anterior to posterior. So I'm fairly happy with that, so I'm gonna maintain that angle and continue to trim the bottom of the cast. You can see it's that line is moving further and further, to, further and further to the posterior. This takes a little bit of practice in order to, to get this correctly. So again. I'm going to check it again. My occlusal plane is parallel with the with the tabletop. The tabletop is totally flat, and the bottom of my cast is totally flat. There's no rocking or tipping, and that's that's how I want the end to end up. I'm going to trim the back again to make it perpendicular with the bottom of the cast, and this time I'm I'm bringing it in closer to to almost where I want to finish it. I don't want to. I don't want to carve into any anatomy that I captured on the cast, but I need to get it close to where I'm going to finish the cast at. See, it's perpendicular with the the back and the and the bottom of the cast are perpendicular. Every now and then I rinse it off in water to make sure that any debris is being removed. As I trim the sides, I'm looking at the occlusal or the central groove of the teeth. And I'm going to line up the, the side of the cast with the central grooves of the teeth. It's much more critical when you're when you're uh, trimming the cast on an actual patient. On this type it on um, because I've captured some of the plastic in the type, the actual type it on, I'm going to trim it to the plastic. Right here, you can see it. And it the plastic kind of goes all the way around. I'm just going to trim it right to that plastic border um, because it's a nice demarcated line around the entire cast. So that's where I'm going to trim it to. On a patient, um, you have to establish that area. So um, it, there may be a little bit of a learning curve to actually. A trimming a cast taken on a patient, but you're going to trim not into the vestibule but close to the vestibule um, on an actual patient while leaving what's called a land area around the borders of the cast. Again, on this case, because it's a type it on, I'm just trimming to the where I can see the plastic uh, demarcated line around the borders of the cast. As you're trimming close to the anterior teeth, you need to be careful that you do not hit the anterior teeth, and I haven't hit them here. You need to really focus um, in that anterior area because those teeth flare uh, to the front. They flare anteriorly, and it's very easy to to trim 
those anterior teeth. Now when I'm finished, I want the cast to be about 15 millimeters thick in the thinnest area. In this case, I'm still a little bit thick. I'm probably about three or four millimeters thick of that 15 millimeters. Um, so I need to determine why I'm thick. It looks like there's a little bit of a lip here. So I'm gonna carve that with my knife. It's probably two or three millimeters here that I can flatten out and get much closer to that 15 millimeters and see how much more I need to trim. So there, I'm about a millimeter away now, about 16 millimeters on the posterior aspect of my cast. In the center, it's gonna be a little bit thinner than that. Now, typically you want it to be about 15 millimeters thick in the thinnest area. So my, my cast may be a little bit thinner than what I'd like. You can see here at that posterior section, I'm right about at 15. So in the center, right in the palatal area, it may be a little bit less than maybe 13 or, or 12 in the center area, but I'm relatively happy with, with the thickness there. Now I check the cast from the, from the side and from the front to make sure my clue plane is flat. And, and I don't have a tip from right to left, so I've, I've trimmed this flat in both areas, so I'm, I'm happy with how that looks. Now I'll go to the poster. You can see in that lingual area, I filled in that lingual aspect with a little bit extra stone um, to bring it up to where the other uh, flat area of the lingual was. You can see that darker stone in the middle is where I filled that in. I've gotten this, the cast wet again before I start trimming it. And again, I'm holding that occlusal plane as flat as possible so that the bottom of my cast is flat. I'm finding that I'm, I'm heavier on the right-hand side. You can see it's thicker on that right side. So I'm gonna be trimming more on the right than I am on the left um, in order to get the occlusal plane flat with the bottom of the cast. Careful as you're doing this, um, it's easy to, to run your fingers into the into the blade of the trimmer. Um, we should be wearing safety glasses. And there's also a, a guard on the trimmer to protect protect you from any debris that may fly off. So I'm constantly taking off and looking to making sure that I can see how I'm trimming, where it's, what's, what I'm doing with every step, where pressure needs to be applied. And I'm gonna verify that I, I have this where I would like it. So I look from the side, the bottom is totally flat, the occlusal plane is relatively flat, I may need to adjust that just a little bit, um, both from the, the posterior, or from the anterior and from the, the side, I've gotten the occlusal plane where I, about where I want it. The cast is still too thick, but I have this a little bump going to the, the posterior now, so it's, it's thicker as it goes posteriorly in that lingual area. So I'm trying to think about where is the thinnest area, and it's going to be more to the anterior of that lingual, and I want that, that to be about 15 millimeters thick in total. Again, I'm going to run under some water to make sure I clean off any debris. So again, I can see a little, that demarcated line where the plastic of my Typhon is, and that's where I'm gonna trim to on this cast. Again, on a patient, it's going to be slightly different. Um, typically, you'll line up the central groove and trim on the, on the sides, um, trim parallel with the central groove of your teeth. On these casts, I'm just I'm just creating a rounded a rounded border. There's different methods to, to do this. Um, so there's some angulations you can do. Um, orthodontically cat trimmed casts are very specific about what angles are done. You can see the, the very posterior of the tray, that's where I'm gonna trim to. I want the, the posterior to be parallel, a little debris on the table, I'm gonna clean that off.
make sure I'm holding that parallel with the posterior section of where I'm going to end up. When the stone gets thin enough, it can you can break it off by, by hand. And I'm just trimming around the borders to where that plastic demarcated line was. And you can see where every pore, there's a line. You can see where the base was poured. You can see where that little section was added. And that oftentimes happens. Now measuring here, at the poster, it's about 22 millimeters. But I feel like I've got about four millimeters of extra stone right in that back area. So if I minus about four millimeters, I pull my, my ruler down about four millimeters, and it looks like I'm still a couple millimeters thick um, from my ideal 15 millimeters in the thinnest area. So probably about 17 millimeters. So I'm going to trim a couple millimeters off the, off the bottom still. So again, I'm pulling it down because I know that I've got extra stone in that lingual area that I'm going to trim off in another step. About 15 there, so. And that's minusing that extra stone that I'm going to trim off. You can see there's little air bubbles here, and that's because I did not vacuum mix my base. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go and fill in those air bubbles um, with a little bit of stone. I'll show you in the next step how that's done. Here's kind of our finest final piece. Our, our two casts should be parallel or relatively parallel. Looks like on the upper cast there's a little bit of an angulation there, probably trimmed a little much in the anterior. Um, they should be parallel with the occlusal plane and the base and the bases of the cast should be relatively parallel as well.